we lengthened it. So it's not three weeks, it's almost five weeks. That's one thing. But in summer school, we're trying to push this, uh, the curricular model that focuses on, on things that we, we know kids struggled with. Um, so you'll see that when you go around in the classrooms that that curriculum is what is being used. And, and to be fair, it's still, uh, half the schools are, are using the NES curriculum, the other half of summer school are, are using um, different curriculum that the teacher wants to use. And so we're supporting those, um, all the schools with just teachers and principals who are still pushing the quality of instruction. I, th I think it's less than ideal. It's, it's only 23, 24 days. Um, so that's not enough time, but it, is, it will prevent some learning loss for the kids who go to summer school. Okay. Okay, I have a question. Um, so I am looking, um, can um, ma'am over there uh, with the cell phone that keeps going off, can you please turn it off? I'm asking you to please turn it off. Thank you. Um, if we're looking at figure four on page two, which is the, and you don't have to pull this up, but it's the NWEA map test percentile, because I, I, I appreciate that growth is important because growth helps us understand how we're getting better in terms of actual um, performance. Um, but this is a, a percentile um, of the children who tested, is that right? So, so right. we're seeing an increase over the year from beginning of year to end of year, which shows for each subgroup, we have had improvement in their overall performance, mm -hmm. right? Yes, um, which is great, that's wonderful news. Um, when I look at it for math, if you go to slide nine, um, again, there is progress in, in every single category except for students with disabilities. And I'm just wondering, um, for those kids in math for third grade, um, and I don't know what, what the trend is otherwise, but at least for this group, um, what, are, what are we doing or what are we seeing in terms of um, how that's showing up um, and how can we m do better by those kids with regard to math for just for those kids with uh, disabilities? Yeah, so um, I'm looking for that, but um, I can answer the question anyway. The, the, the students with disabilities, uh, one, of the, one of the reasons why um, we're going to focus on instruction, I believe that to be the, the key reason why we don't make as much growth in, with students with disabilities. Uh, we needed to get our compliance right. We needed to get our ARD meetings right. We needed to get our IEPs right. We didn't ignore instruction, um, but the focus was uh, from the special ed team more about getting our systems right and our processes right, which is understandable because that's part of the exit criteria too. We had the uh, principal's uh, evaluation has 20 percentage points tied to special ed. 10 per percentage points on compliance and 10% on instruction. So um, it's hard to move the needle, yes, on uh, special needs students, but I think this coming year, uh, you're gonna see us do a lot more instructionally. You see that in the action steps, we're creating these uh, resource classrooms. Um, we're hiring, um, we're uh, being competitive in our hiring for special needs teachers. There's a shortage of SPED teachers that are, of course they have to be certified, that's one thing you can't waive. And so um, we think we're gonna be doing better, but that's the, that's the key, is the quality of instruction. Thank you. Any other questions on this? Um, okay, very good. Um, with regard to this particular monitoring update, and uh, uh, Superintendent, anything else that you'd like to add here? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, do I have a motion to accept the board uh, monitoring update presentation of goal one, progress measure 1.3, and goal two, progress measure 2.3? And I think you have to hit my computer, or maybe that didn't work. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So we have a motion to accept by um, uh, Ms. Garza Lindner and a second by Mr. Martinez. Any further discussion? Yes. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, just, one, uh, <clears throat> just one note. 
uh, something that came up through conversation is in the future on these particular components of the slides, if we can have, um, and, and we can have more discussion about it, but, but the thought is it's very complicated. Even after we've done a lot of discussion and everything else, um, if, if we can begin to think about like one slide that simplifies through pictures or some other measure that makes it easy for a third grader or a ninth grader to read it, um, it'll, it'll do well for us to share with the community um, and make sure that, that all of this good news isn't lost in all the numbers and charts and standard deviation. Uh, yeah, and maybe at some, at some point we can get together to, with the board members who can have some suggestions on how that, how that can happen. Yeah, and I think I think part of that is that the administration is trying to give us additional information. So there's the there's the data that we're monitoring, and then there's additional data. I personally appreciate the additional data, but we can figure that out later. And, and maybe maybe down the road, um, uh, the board we should replace the we should give you the CGI, but make the monitoring report about med expected growth. That might be a little easier too. But. We'll see. Okay, yeah, that's let's. A, sorry. That's a not to well, belabor it, but I think that's what I would want to reinforce from the comment earlier about what are parents getting when they're at school for their kids. Yeah. As information gets to families about this, then I think that helps reinforce community understanding if we try to get it from both ends. Yeah, because they're not getting CGI. Right. <laughs> okay, very good. We have a motion and a second. Um, any other discussion? Okay, if not, then please vote. Okay, motion passes, seven in favor, two absent. Thank you. Okay, the next item on our agenda is the presentation of Constraint 3, Progress Measure 3.1. Um, and Superintendent Miles, if you wanna get started, please yes, go ahead. Yes, ma'am, I'll, I'll start this and then turn it over to uh, Chief Hole and her team. Um, and I, I'll state the, the preamble for this, uh, hold on. We don't have it up yeah, yet. Yeah, there you go. Um, do we, need, do we need to do anything on our screens? Oh, there we go, thank you. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Yes, the, the preamble for this, and I, and I know um, uh, just from the questions that board members have, um, uh, we'll want a longer discussion about the definition of programming and significant change, and we can answer some of those questions tonight. Uh, I believe there's a, a group that's gonna be meeting to talk about the definition a little bit uh, more uh, clearly. So um, I'll start with our definition of how we define the uh, programming and what a significant change is. Obviously there's been a whole bunch of changes this year. Uh, whole scale systemic reform requires that. And even if we didn't do whole scale systemic reform, just adjustments in instructional quality and, and, and uh, instructional strategies um, would require change. Uh, but this is not what this constraint progress measure 3.1 is about. Um, it came about, if you will recall, at, at the same, about the same time, there was a lot of concern a year ago uh, in the summer that NES would um, change the magnet programming in schools. Uh, not so much the magnet programs like Montessori or IB or things like that, because that's, uh, that's not what the, most of those schools were not NES. Um, but there are smaller magnet programs like dance or guitar, environmental science, and, and many schools. And we said we would try to keep those schools, those programs, and, uh, and we did uh, with minor changes. And the board wrote a policy change uh, so that NES would be uh, allowed in, in the schools and make minimum, uh, some changes to um, the magnet schools in order to do NES. So um, we define programming uh, as defined as an academic offering directly impacting how instruction is delivered in the classroom on a daily basis. Um, and significant change to school option is defined as a change that impacts the core identity of a school. And so 
when we when we think about program we're thinking about magnet